Jay. I'm here with Jay Stratton. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Thanks. So I wanted to ask you, how did you get involved in this project? I know your history is pretty extensive. I mean, you were the United States government's highest ranking and most experienced UFO hunters. How do you get a title like that? Well, I mean, <laughs> good question. Uh, so really the, the, the Cliff's notes of that history is uh, in the early 2000s, uh, my position at the Defense Intelligence Agency as the Chief of Air, of Air and Space Warfare, meaning I'm responsible for looking at foreign capabilities in the air and space world, you know, domains, uh, from an emerging and disruptive technology standpoint, meaning anything that might challenge the United States' superiority on the battlefield, right? And I started to see some things, some images of things, some, some documented proof of things that we really didn't understand. And I couldn't trace them back to an adversary on the planet. You know, I'm not saying it's from, you know, little green men from, from Mars, but I mean, I just couldn't find the source, right? And honestly, I thought I could find the source. I, 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 and my leaning was, it's us, right? right? So these things are so advanced sometimes and, and, and the capabilities demonstrated. So I'm thinking, oh, this is just one of our platforms. And as I went around the government trying to find, one, is it ours? And I got that answer. The answer was no. And two, uh, okay, then if it's not us, who is it? And if it's, you know, somebody spying on you guys, yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know, safety and security, right? Um, so I went all over the government looking for the UFO office. I'm thinking there's got to be somebody that deals with this stuff. And I couldn't find one. So at the end of the day, by the mid 2000s, uh, it became apparent that I was the government's UFO guy, kind of give you that early on answer on how we got there. And then we contracted with, uh, we, well, we put a contract out on the streets. We only had one bidder uh, and that was Bigelow Aerospace. So Robert Bigelow enters the scene. So that's how you started kind of working with him. Exactly. Okay. So he was our contractor at Defense Intelligence Agency and he owned this ranch. And as an analyst, let's say I'm a, a at the National Air and Space Intel Center, and I'm the Russian flanker, which is a particular Russian aircraft analyst. You might think I'd go to a Moscow air show and watch a Russian flight fighter flying, right? right. I'm going to get to see it, probably touch it, look at it. Where in the world do you go to look at UAP as a UAP guy? Right. Robert Bigelow recommended Skinwalker Ranch. That's the one place in the country you can go see something for yourself, and that's what I did. So I went to Skinwalker Ranch, first day there, I saw something. So really impacted me, as you can imagine. Uh, I'm looking at something I can't explain, you know, with my own two eyes, uh, not just on an image or something else. So fast forward, um, ebbs and flows in the program. And, and, you know, we end up with another program, you know, initially it was OSAP, we in, in transition to ATIP, you've heard of this uh, ATIP term, Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, and then later to the UAP task force, uh, where I really took, at that point, you know, 15, 16 years of experience and built this whole of government interagency task force to tackle the problem because I had all this experience and no one else in the government had looked at this so long to know I need this, this, and this. You know, I had a checklist, right? And the first thing I did was make that change from UFO to UAP. I did, yeah. And it gets down to perceptions. And, and, and when people hear UFO, they think little green men. They think nuts and bolts aircraft, right? And getting over to folks in Congress, even over to the White House, I'm not going to get on the briefing docket if I'm saying I'm going to come over and brief UFOs. They're not even going to take the briefing. But UAP, they're trying to understand it. And honestly, UAP can be a nuts and bolts thing, or it can be... Uh, an unknown weather phenomenon. It could be uh, a biologic. If you saw that new movie, Nope, right? That thing was, was biological flying around. Like, well, there's a lot of things in this world we don't know. I mean, a lot, a lot of my career was in naval intelligence. How much of the ocean have we not uh, explored? A lot, right? So just taking all that mindset into this area of concern, uh, it was very important that we take it seriously and that we actually do uh, apply some resources to understanding it. What do you actually think is happening? What is your professional opinion of what's happening? Well, it's dynamic. There's yeah. a lot of things happening, right? It's the, not just one. No, 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 no. Um, and really, you get to... You've probably got a foreign actor. Uh, you've probably got well, everything I mentioned. You, you know, weather phenomena that we're trying to understand, and and then then you've got the true unidentified. Mm -hmm. And at the heart and soul of that, um, I, you know, my operating philosophy for the UAP task force, again after looking at this so long, was we're going to own that. And 
that was the first time that I'm aware of in recent history that the U.S. government has admitted we don't know what something is, right? Instead of saying swamp gas or all the other stupid excuses that you heard back in the Blue Book days, we said, hey, we don't know what this is. We're going to figure it out. We have a safety concern with all of our aircraft out there, and we have a security concern. And th that was the, the real role and mission of the UAP task force is to, to try to resolve that unidentified, make it become identified, uh, but also make our air crew and military members and everyone else out there feel secure and that we're doing something about it and we're taking it seriously. What do you think about the government like not releasing a lot of information about this and you talking about it or bringing that out? Is that something that worries you at all or do you feel like it's a supportive Yeah, I think process? to work through the stigma, it's going to take a public and, a, and, and that private or that, that, that military government intel community side, right? Okay. We've got to work together. Uh, it, as you've seen, Congress has taken a really serious tone on this. You needed that. You needed that. Made, that made more people comfortable to talk about it. You see news media covering it without the giggle factor. And, and they're transitioning more into this mindset of this is important and it's something that we need to deal with. And let's stop you know, making fun of it. Let's let's work in and make this serious, right? Let's make this. Uh, and and I think as we go forward, uh, I see right now it looks like the you know the government. Like I'm not government anymore. Um, you see them though, kind of trying to put the the the, the you know. What's the word I'm looking for? The kibosh on it. Yeah. Well, they're trying to put it back in the box, right? Yeah, they that would be the best way to say it, right? They're trying to put the put it back in the box, and you know, Travis and I are going to do everything we can to stop that. And that Skinwalker Ranch is a, a high definition camera docu series that we are going to show you what we're seeing out there, uh, and, and not hide it, right? And we can get away with that all day long. And and, and what you asked about security, you know, I. Having worked this so long inside of the intel community, I know my left and right boundaries. I know what I can and I can't say. And really for them to come to me and say, oh, you can't say this or you can't say that. Well, based on what? You know, I'm, I'm the guy that, that worked this so long. I know what I can and can't talk about. There are some very valid reasons for security. Uh, because let's say there is a foreign activity and we're monitoring that. You don't, you don't walk and show them that, hey, you know, that's there because they're going to go away. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, if, if, if you know the room's bugged, it's yeah. not the best thing to think, hey, the room's bugged. You just keep your mouth shut and you might use that. Right. You know, oh, the room's bugged. So, you know, so you saw that in Sopranos, right, where they're, they're listening. And then if they know the room's bugged, they can say, oh, hey, Jimmy's going to go do this. And, and <laughs> they think the FBI is thinking, hey, Jimmy's going to go do this. When in reality, they knew the room was bugged and they're just manipulating. Them, so, exactly. yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. We appreciate it. We're excited to see what's next. Well, stand by, right? We'll say stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah, season six, I uh, expect of this summer, okay. uh, as we get going, is going to be even more and more uh, demonstration and, and uh, poking the bear a little bit to get the, uh, the phenomena active and collect that data and give it to Travis to figure out what it means. I love it. Well, All right. thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thanks. You're welcome.